Greetings, everyone! Welcome to the Sonic Boom Issue 4 Review! Um, Recap! Last issue featured our heroes looking for Amy's hammer and trying to find Amy a replacement weapon. Said hammer ended up inside Eggman's Big Boy and Orbot and Cubot fought for possession. The hammer escaped, destroying Big Boy in the process. Sonic caught the hammer and delivered it to Amy, so everything's alright. Well, on her way home, Styx found something that would give her ultimate power. Huh. We start with Eggman launching another attack with an upgraded Big Boy. Guess he must have worked overtime to rebuild it from that junk pile last issue. And we have some more logo names. I give up. We have some fourth wall breaking as Eggman berates them for not being on the beach for the climactic battle. And Sonic forgot about the running theme for the story arc. Well, Eggman wants to fight now, so our heroes have to oblige. I mean, they've been this thing before, and I'm sure nothing will... Okay? Yeah, Eggman really improved Big Boys, so none of the hero's previous tactics will work. I'm not gonna comment on this here, ugh. Foolish Knuckles. Unless that umbrella belonged to Mary Poppins, you deserve that stomping. Sticks arrives, and after munching on food that's been on the ground... Ugh. She prepares to reveal the item she found last issue. I like that even Eggman's curious here. After giving some history, she reveals this ultimate weapon. A rock! Oh, I'm sorry. The Rock of Justice! Both friend and enemy react appropriately. So as everyone else gets ready to resume fighting, Amy tells Six that this is no time for conspiracy games. Eggman, in a bad mood, feels like calling the attack off. But a pep talk from Orbot, complete with logo by the way, puts Eggman back into the fighting mood. So Team Sonic's not doing so well against Big Boy, all while Six keeps insisting that they use the Rock of Justice! What's this? Sonic and Tails are using an inner beam maneuver to bypass Eggman's defenses? Will this win the day? Nope. Amy and Knuckles attempt a team attack of their own, but it has equal amounts of fail. Six finally has enough and tosses the Rock of Justice at Big Boy. It ricochets all over the place, seemingly damaging various parts of the robot, and it apparently does nothing. Eggman makes his threat, but it turns out the Rock of Justice did its job and Big Boy collapses. Again. Oh, Styx is happy the Rock did its job. Eggman makes more threats, but after seeing the heroes with the Rock of Justice, he quickly speeds away. And everyone now believes in the power of the Rock. Why doesn't anyone ever believe me? It's not like I'm paranoid. Stop following me! Unfortunately, Styx learns the Rock of Justice lost its power taking out Big Boy. Thus, our heroes mourn the Rock. I hope Sonic in between issues washed his scarf. Styx takes the Rock home, and after some parting words, she tosses it in a pile with other rocks, cinder blocks, and a magic 8-ball. Only in Sonic Boom, people! The final page has Eggman angry he wasted four issues on Big Boy. But that won't stop the Doctor as he reveals his next project, and he hopes that the heroes get a load of this. Get a load of this! The plot is... Well, the plot is simple, predictable, and goofy. Just like the cartoon. The overall Big Boy arc concludes in this issue, and it's lampshaded a couple of times, particularly by Eggman. This is a clear example of writing for a trade. For those not familiar with the term, it's when a comic writer writes a story that's specifically formatted to be collected in a trade paperback or graphic novel. Sonic Universe and Mega Man are prime examples of this formula. Anyway, back to the plot of this story. For being a goofier version of the main villain, Eggman here learns from his mistakes. He develops viable countermeasures against not only the hero's previous tactics, but their new attacks as well. Except for the Rock of Justice. Yeah, as soon as Styx introduces her discovery, you know how this will end. It's classic cliche storytelling. Character finds something ridiculous, other characters ignore them and said item, ignore the character and item end up saving the day. But the artwork and character expressions, once again, a Ryan Jampol, Jennifer Hernandez combo, make this tolerable. Heck, 
Eggman's curiosity about Styx's discovery alone makes this enjoyable. I know the idea of the Rock of Justice is supposed to be funny, but I've been thinking. Is the rock really a source of power that Styx discovered? Or is it just an ordinary rock that plays into Styx's craziness and she just happens to have a good pitching arm? You decide. One final note. Sonic and Tails use inner beams. The inner beam itself is part of the franchise, showing up in the games and the cartoon. My final score for this issue is a 7 out of 10. It's predictable and cliche, but the art and character interactions almost make up for it. So Eggman has a new plan and a new weapon. What is it? Well, we'll find out next month. Until then, have a good day and be safe.